Hello, everyone, and thanks for coming to my presentation titled Artist Style and Year Classification Using Face Recognition and Clustering with Convolutional Neural Networks. My name is Doruk Pankaroglu. I work at STM AS in Ankara, Turkey. Let me talk a bit about myself. I got my bachelor's degree from uh, Sabancı University at 2010. My master's degree from TOBB ETU University in Ankara at 2014. And uh, currently I'm continuing my PhD studies at uh, Hacettepe University at Ankara, Turkey since 2016. And also I work as a senior software engineer at STMA since 2012. My uh, research interests are Internet of Things, IoT security, network security and machine learning. As you can see, image processing actually is not among my current research areas because of my PhD studies, but this paper was a like a pet project of mine and uh, it was developed from a uh, project of an image processing class during my PhD studies and I, I can say I'm proud of it. The outline of my presentation is with the, we will start with an introduction. We will talk a bit about related work and I will talk a bit about the implementation of the paper. Then we will talk about the results obtained and then we will conclude and provide a bit of future directions. So what is art classification? Uh, you can say that it's to correctly guess what a painting or an art object, what painting in this context of the paper is originated from or its uh, techniques or its styles. So we group the three classification goals as creator, technique and movement era or age. For the context of this paper, technique is outside of the scope because it requires a, a much more detailed and uh, much more a zoomed in view of the painting itself. Uh, photographs taken by very high resolution cameras are needed to actually analyze the brush strokes or the shapes and directions of the brush strokes or the paint, paint colors themselves are also used in the process so it is not in the scope of this paper and uh, creator and movement era age goals are in the scope of this paper so classification techniques of course you know the currently most of the classification is still done by humans the art experts or art curators do a lot of the classification at museums for example once in a while a new news emerged that a lost painting of some old artist is found and then the experts are called in to find if uh, this art piece is actually belongs to that artist or if it is a forgery and sometimes humans are prone to errors and there are some high profile cases of art forgery getting sold at very high prices and passed off as original. And uh, on the other hand, computers are uh, trying to catch up with humans. Of course, they are currently not that uh, good at classific classifying uh, art as good as humans, but they are faster and have some current applications in educational purposes or uh, general classification and they are uh, getting good at it. It's an active area as you can see and uh, paintings of similar subjects such as uh, still lives or portraits by different painters can have very different styles so uh, computer-based classification leads to varied classification results but actually uh, the type of classification is used in uh, such areas such as online museums with the uh, COVID outbreak today. Online museums are actually gaining popularity and 
this type of classification applications are used in those areas. And I will talk a bit about uh, computer-aided classification and what techniques are used. Techniques such as uh, image segmentation and uh, stochastic modeling are used in the more established uh, computer-aided classification techniques nowadays. And these use the image uh, and uh, do some uh, similarity checks and uh, things like that to make a good guess about classification. And more recently, uh, face detection is gaining popularity. The big companies such as Facebook and Google have their own face detection projects named DeepFace and FaceNet, respectively. And these projects utilize the convolutional neural networks to enhance their capabilities. And the aim of this paper is that utilizing the convolutional neural network backed face detection methods to actually classify paintings by their artists and by their eras. Uh, as you know, there are a lot of faces in paintings. Of course, there are paintings such as nature paintings or abstract paintings or modern paintings that do not have faces as well. But actually a large percentage of them have faces in them, portraits or other paintings that include humans. So the abundance of faces in the paintings and the fact that uh, many painters have a distinct style of painting can enable face detection and clustering methods to detect uh, artists from the faces in their uh, paintings. Also, the style of these faces can also be used to classify the era in which the painting belongs. Uh, I would like to talk a bit about uh, related work about this uh, area. Previous studies utilized uh, wavelet analysis, naive Bayesian and Adaboost applications, and linear SVM classifiers. As you know, these are all uh, machine learning uh, techniques used to make uh, classifications for these uh, art objects. Uh, for example, in 2004, a study used wavelet analysis to analyze the distinct by strokes of uh, the painters to check if an art piece is a forgy or not. And as I uh, said, more recent studies utilizing CNNs are uh, starting to be used more often. Uh, for example, Google uh, introduced a, a web application, an online museum, where you can uh, upload your selfie and it uh, provides a list of portraits that are most uh, similar to your face. And this used the face that uh, algorithm at the back end. And I would like to talk a bit about uh, FaceNet because it's also used in my study. Uh, FaceNet is developed uh, by researchers from Google at uh, 2015. Uh, it's one of the most important features is that it's pose invariant. So if you are smiling or have a neutral expression, it uh, doesn't matter for FaceNet to correctly recognize your face. It also has a high performance in uh, facial recognition benchmarks such as uh, faces in the wild or YouTube faces. It's a data set taken from YouTube videos with faces in this. And also there are uh, several implementations, open source implementations of FaceNet on GitHub as well, which would be utilized. And now I will talk about how we implemented our project. It uh, is implemented in six steps, actually. The first step is the face detection method is chosen and implemented. Then the data set is obtained. Then the data set is uh, in a pre-processing phase. And then the data set is trained with a model. 
and the, the data is clustered and finally the data is analyzed. I will talk a bit about the data set. Its name is the WikiArt data set. Uh, the data set contains 81,000 uh, and large than maybe 81,000 paintings and uh, up to 2,148 uh, artists. The paintings are divided, uh, categorized into 27 styles or periods and also they are categorized into 45 uh, genres such as uh, religious paintings uh, or still lives and so on for the context of the work we did not use the genres uh, as you may guess this uh, data set is uh, created for the paper uh, published by uh, Saleh and El Gamal in, in 2015 and the WikiArt website is actually used to collect these paintings and classify, uh, label them. Uh, for the sake of this work, we reduced the data set to uh, 12,907 paintings, which were painted by 192 artists. And to reduce the computational requirements, we chose paintings from six styles from the uh, 1600 to 17th uh, 16th century to 17th century uh, these are early renaissance high renaissance late renaissance northern renaissance baroque and rococo so in the we come to the pre-processing phase in this phase the faces are extracted whether single or multiple and aligned to become the center of a uh, of the image and you can see in the picture that the larger images have their faces extracted <coughs> in one of the paintings there are two people and those two were extracted as well the output images are 160 by 160 pixels and the bounding box the margin is set as 32 pixels so this provides us with a uh, set of faces that are taken from the paintings in the training phase we create the training model the model is uh, trained classifier is trained with the vgg phase 2 data set it's a open source data set containing 3.3 million face images from 9,000 people. So we train the data set to recognize faces from this uh, data set. And in the clustering phase, we use some uh, algorithms to group the images into clusters. In this phase, the DB scan algorithm is used to check the similarity of the images if 25 or more similar images are found they form a cluster and then a face net is used on the clusters to further cluster the similar faces so we get uh, distinct clusters of similar looking faces in our data set and then comes the analyzing phase so we now we have uh, a lot of clusters with uh, a lot of paintings in them more than 25 and we analyze the clusters by their file names uh, the file names were uh, written as the uh, name of the artist uh, slash name of the work slash year of the painting slash style of the painting so following the clustering uh, operation the produced clusters are analyzed using the file names of the paintings in the clusters the file names contain the uh, four information, as I uh, mentioned. And uh, if possible, some older works do not have year, but they also have the year. So at each cluster, uh, we parse the file names and 
we name the cluster with the majority artist year and style of each cluster. So there can be different. Uh, the artist well, could be a majority, but year could be not. And uh, we provide these clusters for uh, three different groups, artist year and style. Years are set at a 50 year period. So for example, in a cluster, uh, there are the majority of paintings painted between uh, 1500 and 1550. Uh, then we can say that that cluster is uh, set in the year 1500 and 1550. If there is no majority or a tie in a cluster, then we omit that cluster for our uh, results. And uh, after we uh, label the clusters, we try to produce the results. So uh, four main metrics are used to produce these results. As you may guess, these are the four uh, true and false positive negative metrics. In the context of this uh, paper, true positive means the number of paintings that belong to the majority of the cluster. And false positive is the number of paintings that do not belong to the majority of the cluster, but those, both paintings are in the cluster. And true negative and false negative are, true negative is the number of paintings not present in the cluster and not belonging to that cluster's majority. And false negative is the number of paintings not present in the cluster, but belonging to that cluster's majority. As you can see, we get our data from inside the cluster and also outside the cluster itself. So we uh, have two types of results, cluster specific and inter cluster. One is uh, one gets the results from inside of the cluster and the other gets results from the whole set. So the uh, metrics for the cluster specific results are the accuracy, precision, recall, and F measure. As you may well know, these are all used for uh, the uh, machine learning research. The accuracy metric is the uh, general rate of the correctness of the cluster artist compared to the whole data set. The precision is the rate of correctness of the uh, clusters artists in a uh, given cluster, while recall is the rate of correctness of that uh, clusters artists in the whole data set. And uh, the F measure is the uh, score that combines precision and recall and uh, is a harmonic mean of the two. And for the uh, inter-cluster results, we have purity, normalized mutual information, NMI, and the RAND index. So the purity is a more straightforward uh, measure, similar to accuracy, and uh, it provides a general quality of clustering. But uh, for clusters with single items, purity tends to produce misleading results. So we also use the normalized mutual information as well. It normalizes the value, so uh, it provides a better evaluation of the quality of clustering. And finally, the round index is a measure of similarity between clusters. It is uh, calculated by adding the pairs of true positive and true negative values in every cluster and uh, dividing this value by the total number of images. So let me talk a bit uh, about our results. The, this is not, of course, the, all of the results. We uh, actually produced 126 clusters in the artist classification task. And 115 of these clusters had a majority artist. So as you can see, the average accuracy, precision, recall, and F measure values of the artist clusters 
are 58, 93, 34, and 48 percent, respectively. Uh, as you can see, the accuracy and the recall and F measure values are not strictly high. I can say that this can be uh, attributed to the styles of the era, which included a lot of religious paintings. For example, one of the clusters were uh, completely composed of paintings of Jesus Christ by a lot of different artists with no majority. Uh, we can say that at the earlier eras, uh, we had more similar paintings in style, so the artist clusters uh, could not uh, correctly guess the painters. For the style clusters, uh, 88 clusters were created with 86 of them having a majority. And uh, these clusters provided accuracy, precision, recall and F measure values of uh, 63, 86, 47 and uh, 59 percent respectively. And uh, you can see the style results are uh, better than the artist results because it's a more broad concept. And uh, we correctly, more correctly identified the Baroque styles because it's much more distinct than the uh, other uh, paintings. Maybe you can uh, remember the Caravaggio's very dark paintings that belong to the uh, Baroque period. So the distinct style caused the higher values of results accordingly. And finally, our third result group is the year results. For this result, 74 clusters in total were created, but only 30 of them had a majority. The large difference between the clusters and the ones with majorities is uh, the 50 year period, I guess, because uh, a lot of paintings could be put in there wrongly and those uh, 50 year period majorities were hard to find. And these clusters, the ones with majorities provided a 81, 93, 82 and 87% of accuracy, precision, recall and F measure are very good values. We can say that it was hard to cluster those uh, paintings, but when done, it were uh, much more uh, correct. Uh, I would like to conclude that, uh, in general, this is a noble and promising approach, but of course limited to paintings with faces, but it can be used for uh, art recommendation or educational purposes. The artist classification results needs improvement, which would be done by uh, different face recognition methods, I guess. And as I said, it can only be used with uh, paintings with faces in it. Uh, for the future directions, uh, I would like to utilize all of the wiki art data sets with the 80 plus uh, thousand paintings. And I would like to implement other face recognition and clustering methods to uh, provide a comparison and maybe improve the results. And uh, I would like to implement a more refined uh, style classification solutions to uh, handle the later more modern styles. And I would like to use uh, bigger clusters, maybe not 25, but maybe at least 100 paintings in them. Uh, with that, uh, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for uh, 